What's going on everybody and welcome to the first episode of Testing Rides. Today I'm going to be testing the 2017 Ford Escape 2 liter SE. Welcome to the 2017 Ford Escape. Most of the updates from the previous model are just all interior and exterior styling. So the minor style to the front, the model change to the front is the all new Ford SUV look. So it has the hexagon, the hexagon grill that moved the turn signals and the fog lights from the same area. So the, so the turn signals are above the fog lights there. And then they made the headlights look, look more aggressive. And on the higher models, they come with LED daytime running lights. And this vehicle, comes with standard with the fog lights you see on the front, LED tail lights, a backup camera, Bluetooth audio connectivity, USB, power driver's seat, manual passenger seat, and electric mirrors that are heated. So the base 2.5 liter is naturally aspirated and it has 168 horsepower and 170 foot-pounds of torque. The mid-range 1.5 liter turbo has 179 horsepower and 177 foot-pounds of torque and the 2 liter which this one has has 240 horsepower and 275 foot-pounds of torque and this vehicle weighs about 3600 pounds the starting price for the Ford Escape SE is $25,100 and that's for the 1.5 turbo two-wheel drive this vehicle is the 2 liter turbo with all-wheel drive and this one starts at not $29,000 alright let's go ahead and check out the inside Alright, let's talk about the, this interior a little bit. So over here on the door panels, it's pretty soft, especially it's soft on, on all the right places. So up here where you need to put your arm, it's really soft. It does, it's not as hard as other cars I've driven. You definitely can tell when you get inside that this is definitely like a Ford Europe design product because everything in here just feels really high quality. Yes, there's some cheap plastics because this is not a very high model, but Everything overall just feels really good. The dash is really soft. The gauges are really clear and laid out. Even though this is the base model screen, it's still very clear. And what I like, they got rid of all the buttons that the old center stack had. The center stack on the old Escape had probably about look like, like 20 or 30 buttons. And they are really small and hard to press when you're driving. Now they just made this really simple to use. And also the heating control is a little bit better. They also move the shifter from being like here in the middle like a minivan or something like that to like down here on the floor like a normal car and they move the cup holders over a little bit and they added an electronic parking brake and they added the start stop technology to this car and it's actually not too bad right. overall the interior is really really good and I'm a big guy and I'm really comfortable in here and the seating position is perfect all right let's take a look at the back So in the back here, you just have a basic back seat, decent amount of space. This this seat is where I'm comfortable to drive. And actually, there's there's not that much space back here, but it's a decent amount. And most people, I have my seat farther back than most people do. But there's a small person still could be able to fit back here. 
It has a headrest that flip down so you can see, have some rear visibility. And it just looks like a pretty comfortable place to be. So since this one doesn't have many options, it does not have the foot activated lift gate, but it is an option. So to open up, so you just come down here, handle right here, open it up, and there's your rear compartment. The rear compartment is really roomy back here. It's really roomy. The rear compartment is pretty big back here. I think, I'm pretty sure you could be able to fit about four of the big Costco rolls of toilet paper back here and have plenty, plenty, plenty extra space. I just have my camera bag and my jacket back here just so you can see and there's still a ton of room back here. Also, over here, it's just another little storage area, but if you have the higher model, this is where the sub, if you have the Sony system, this is where the subwoofer goes. And then over here, it's just some extra little side storage. All right, let's see how this thing sounds. All right, let's talk about how this thing drives. talk a little bit about how this car rides and drives so this car rides really well I drive a Lexus and I think this is really well because it's the perfect amount it's a perfect amount of comfort and stiffness so this thing can still carve canyons but going over rough terrain you're, the ride is not very jarring at all it's not jarring at all it's actually really soft but it's but when you go around corners, it doesn't feel like you're in a boat, pretty much. Because, I mean, the, this car doesn't weigh that much, really. It's just, I mean, it's 3,600 pounds. 3,600 pounds is, okay, yeah, it's kind of a lot. But it's not a lot compared to what other SUVs weigh. This car is really quick, too. Because it has the 270, sorry, the 275 pound-feet of torque. It really... It really pulls, like, you can launch this thing and it just goes crazy. The other thing about this car, do you hear how quiet this is? Yes, it's raining. There's a little road noise from the tires, but there's not much. It's not much at all. It's about as quiet as my Lexus would be on this highway. One of the, one of the other great things about this car is, because since I'm a big guy, sometimes cars are kind of not very comfortable for me but this car is perfect it fits me perfect i don't feel like i'm in the back seat because even though i am big i don't like to ride in the back seat and i'm able to sit up straight and have enough room have the back seat passengers be able to get in and have the passenger next to me not sitting on top of me the visibility is also really very good so you look out all the windows and you have pretty good visibility but like most suvs that have decent styling you look in the back like in your blind spot in the right hand side and there's nothing but pillar which, you know, is typical. Let's talk about kind of one of the most important things people think about when they buy a compact crossover is fuel economy. So, driving this thing fairly hard, I've averaged about 20 miles to the gallon on regular gas, on regular unleaded gas, 80, 87. That's actually 
not bad because these do have because these do have a lot of power and the fuel economy ratings is based on are based on running this car with premium it's actually pretty good but on the highway this thing is rated at 20 28 to 27 miles to the gallon and I got just exactly that I've got we're not driving on the highway at 65 miles an hour I was able to get 27 miles to the gallon you know in the flat perfect highways and at least this thing gets exactly said it says it gets exactly what it's supposed to get I mean better would be great but you know you get what you get when you buy the, the bigger engine option engine option I haven't driven the 1.5 turbo yet but based on how the fuel economy was on the 1.6 turbo that I've, that I've driven before I assume that that's gonna be that engine's gonna get the best fuel economy it's even gonna get better than the nasty estimated 2.5 liter just because it's not struggling as hard because it, it has the power and the torque. The naturally aspirated engine is heavier, of course. It doesn't it doesn't have as much power. It does have about the same amount of torque, but the simple fact that it doesn't have enough power, it's gonna be struggling a little more trying to keep its speed. So it's gonna suck more gas. But I definitely think if you wanna if you want I mean, if you want a compact crossover SUV that's going to handle well, going to give you some good power, it's going to be very comfortable, and it's going to look great, you definitely should buy this Ford Escape. The, the, just because I think this car is great, this car is not perfect at all. The biggest complaint I have is sometimes the transmission when you're shifting from reverse to drive and sometimes the transmission can be a bit clunky. It's a lot better than it used to be because I used to feel like it happened a lot more in the 13, 14, to 14 through 16 models just because um, even though the 2 liter turbo motor has been in a lot of cars in Europe and everything, it's new to here so it's different specifications so um, it, they still need to work a few more bugs out. But they've definitely worked out the bugs in this one and I think it's a great car. And also one other, one other thing I don't like about this car is the simple fact that this car is nearly 30 grand and you don't get an optional touchscreen. I think that's kind of ridiculous. Like, even Hyundai and Kia products are putting a touchscreen in their car standard. Like, it doesn't need to be a huge touchscreen, but just a touchscreen. Like, for $30,000, I should be getting more than just that little screen right there. But besides my small little gripes, this car is excellent. I think if you're looking at the Ford Escape to buy one, I really think, unless you're getting the steal on the 2016 model, buy the 17. The 17, they just fixed so many small problems that the old Escapes had. And it's a lot better, a lot better. I've driven 13 through 16 Escapes, and this one is by far the best one out of all of them. I mean, it should be, because it's the newest one, of course, but it's definitely um, worth, buying the 17 over the 16. If you have a 13, I wouldn't say you need to upgrade though, because it's not drastically different from the, from the 13s to 16s. It's, all the small little touches are different, like in the 2 liter turbo, having the paddle shifters for manual shifting mode, that's really good. Um, and the way they've removed so many buttons from here and moved the center, the center console and rearranged it a little bit better. And the, the cloth material is a little bit better and it's a little more stylish. But other than that, there's no reason for you to go from a 13 if you already like it to a 17. But if you want, if you're buying a new Escape, definitely buy the 17 over 16. Definitely should buy the two liter turbocharged Ford Escape. Whichever body it comes in, if you want all the features, you could get the titanium with the push button starter and all that stuff and the, all that stuff standard. But if you don't want to spend thirty-five thousand dollars on a Ford Escape, definitely get the two-liter turbo SC model. But I think you might want to get the performance back. I'm gonna picture put a picture of that in right here, and it looks pretty cool. So if you like this video, check out my, check out some of my other videos. Hit that big old thumbs up button and keep riding with me.